so. Good morning, my name is George Williams. I'm the Vice Chair for Critical Care Medicine in the Department of Anesthesiology. I have the privilege of serving as the Medical Co-Director of the Surgical Intensive Care Unit at Lyndon B. Johnson General Hospital in Harris Health. And talking about this project is really something that's really near and dear uh, to me and I think the entire team because we take care of patients at the bedside and just due to the nature of the COVID crisis, um, there were many circumstances where we had to preserve PPE with our hospital partners. So I uh, sent an email to um, uh, Dr. Stoll and Dr. Blackburn and and they actually, in terms of working on a way to potentially create some solutions for this, and they um, immediately were extremely supportive, got us in touch with fantastic people at the university, including but not limited to Dr. David Volk and Dr. Billy Gill, and um, one of our outstanding research assistants, Max Skibber, who I believe is gonna be a future medical student here at UT Health, which is fantastic. And within four days, we were able to get a prototype for a face shield that we can actually use in the clinical setting. And so this is a sample of the face shield right here and it's actually made on a 3D, it's actually made on a 3D printer, which was fantastic. And I had very limited experience to 3D printers before um, this activity. And also at the same time, we were able to find that we could take a, a piece of transparent material. This is actually a high grade um, plastic piece that we're able to procure. Um, in the beginning we were trial links out, we actually used transparencies from the office supply store and then simply took a triple hole puncher, put the transparency in the triple hole puncher, punched it, and had these three holes. And with that, any person, including myself, could simply take these notches, put the holes in the notches right here, and that quickly had a face shield, which um, was tremendous for us. And so actually my first day actually having this, uh, when I walked, uh, when I went back to um, one of our hospital partners, there was someone performing intubations that didn't have a face shield. And they were like, well, you know, I just, we we'll just, we have to do it. We're just going to tough do it. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, let me give you my prototype. And this person absolutely loved it. And used it for the rest of the day. And in fact, everyone else in the department was like, hey, I really would like a face shield. How can I get one? And so we actually, as we were able to continue printing, um, we were able to start handing out the prototypes. But furthermore, Dr. Gill was able to help us modify and improve the design and rapidly produce in a massive scale so we can actually have enough PPE, not only just for people in one department or one division, but for our entire hospital partners. Hi, I'm Max Skibber. I'm a research assistant in uh, the pediatric surgery department. Uh, I work with Dr. Gill and Dr. Cox. Um, I've been here for three years and have had the privilege of growing as an engineer under their tutelage. Uh, I was very pleased when Dr. Williams um, brought a open source visor um, to our lab and showed it around and uh, it was quite apparent from the beginning that ease of use was going to be important so we took a look at his prototype and tried to improve upon it um, using some of our engineering background and make sure that there was uh, a certain comfort level that uh, the PPE visor would not impede uh, physicians and nurses and um, anybody else who would be using the visor in their duties and that it was completely functional in protecting, uh, protecting them. At the beginning of the project, we relied solely on 3D printers, which have a wide range, but not necessarily the most appropriate materials for, uh, for the end product. So we tweaked the uh, forehead region uh, to expand, to get the, the visor away from the face. And we also expanded the outer region a little bit in, in case you had uh, something, uh, glasses or, or such on the side of your face. We also tried to minimize the amount of material used uh, that improved printing time during the iterative stages, but that also allowed us to keep costs low during the injection molding process. That is also something that I, I worked with our manufacturers on to make sure that we could keep strength um, and keep 
the uh, the visor, you know, it's got to hold onto the head, uh, be reusable or at least usable for a full shift, and um, but still be comfortable. Our manufacturing partners at Proto Labs have been uh, amazing partners in this. They clearly have seen the need to uh, help out people with production of this stuff and their rapid injection molding capabilities um, have really created the ability for us to get 20,000 of these face shields in a, in a two week period of time is really what it's gonna be. I can only credit the team and connections that we have here and the uh, unbelievable support from the medical school. Um, Dr. Barbara Stoll, Dr. Trey Miller have been instrumental in helping us make this solution happen in the most rapid time scale possible. I actually didn't think it was possible to do this quickly uh, until Dr. Stoll moved some mountains around and uh, made this happen. So um, it's really been so gratifying for me because like everybody else I feel a little helpless in the face of this this uh, virus and um, being able to actively work to help protect myself and uh, all, you know my friends and colleagues and everybody to be able to be a little bit safer um, as we all fight this fight together so thank you very much